Welcome to this presentation on how to implant Infinity from Abbott. Considering the nature of this lecture, I would like to point out that I am consultant for, among other companies, Abbott. But the opinions expressed here are my own and completely independent from Abbott. If you are not experienced in DBS implantation, please consult instead the full length lecture. This is the short version for experienced users. Most DBS surgeons are well acquainted with the products of Medtronic, and the easiest way of describing the implantation procedure of Abbott is by simply mentioning what is different from implanting the products from Medtronic. The first thing is that the electrode is stiffer and the proximal end cannot be bent. Thus, the minimal length of the cranial incision is about 5 mm longer. When we are making the burr hole, the hole often becomes more narrow than expected. This is because the head of the burr is shaped like a truncated cone. Thus, when you make a burr hole in a thin skull, the diameter of the opening of the burr hole will be more narrow than in a patient with a thick skull bone. When implanting Abbott, it is more important to have a burr hole of full size, as I will discuss further, why I am now using a burr with 2 mm wider diameter. The electrode holder from Abbott, the Guardian, is constructed according to the same principle as the stim lock from Medtronic, and is mounted in the same way. It has a low profile and a stable construction that, in my experience, have caused very few problems. A potential problem with these devices is a poor fit. This can be due to the curvature of the skull, a too narrow burr hole, or a ring that is off-center. If the ring is unstable due to the curvature of the skull, the Guardian is equipped with flexible wings, which might help in this case. More often, the problem is caused by the fact that the centering tool and the clip are designed to be inserted below the ring, into the burr hole. If the burr hole is too narrow, then there will be a poor fit. The insertion tool and the clip from Abbott goes deeper into the burr hole than the insertion tool and clip of Medtronic, and this is why it is more important to have a burr hole of full size when using the Guardian. If this occur, simply remove the centering tool with the ring and enlarge the burr hole, and then there will be a good fit. But even if the burr hole is too narrow, it will still be possible to attach the ring to the skull. But if the hole is too narrow, it will be difficult or impossible to insert the clip. And even if you manage to insert the clip, it might be difficult or impossible to lock it around the electrode. Therefore, always test if the clip can be inserted and locked without problems before implanting the electrode. If necessary, enlarge the burr hole using a drill or curette, and this can be done with the ring in place if you are careful. Concerning the inner stylet. With Metronic, the inner stylet is locked to the, to the electrode and extends almost to the tip of the electrode. With Abbott, the inner stylet is not locked to the electrode and ends about 2 cm above the tip of the electrode. Therefore, make sure that the inner stylet is correctly inserted before implanting the electrode. Here we see an example of what happened when I pressed the electrode against a surface with the inner stylet correctly inserted. It does not bend much. And here we see what happened if the inner stylet is retracted one centimeter. So, when preparing the electrode, make sure that the inner stylet is well inserted into the electrode. Put the stop on the electrode. The directional marker on the Abbott electrode is indicating the location of the directional contacts and should face upwards, in the same direction as the stop screw. When tightening the lock screw, this will also lock the inner stylet. 
and it might be convenient to cut the handle of the inner stylet. It is then time to implant the electrode. I first make a channel with a radio frequency electrode and then introduce the DBS electrode into this. The only difference when implanting the Abbott electrode is that it is probably best to keep the directional marker in the intended position during the insertion in order to avoid torque. When the electrode is in place, I seal the durotomy with tissue glue. When locking the electrode with a clip, make sure that the stop on the electrode is pressed towards the stop in the frame and make sure that the lock screw is pointing in the right direction. Place the clip in the ring and lock the electrode by pushing the button. With Metronic, the inner stylet can be removed without removing the stop, but with Abbott you need first to remove the stop before removing the inner stylet. We then place the cap into the ring and gently pr press the electrode into the electrode groove and lock the cap. The inner stylet is extending far beyond the electrode and it ends in a knob. In the lying or semi-sitting patient, the center of gravity might pull the electrode upwards resulting in a slight but possibly significant misplacement. In order to avoid this, the electrode stopper is pressed towards the instrument stopper when locking the clip of the Guardian. And, as I mentioned, it might be convenient to cut the inner stylet. When the electrode is in place, we will verify the location of the electrode using an O-arm. And we can look at the direction of the directional contacts by visualizing the directional marker on the electrode. Some torque might have uh, occurred during the implantation of the electrode and it has been demonstrated that a significant change can occur early after implantation. To be honest, I will do my best to introduce the electrode in the correct position, but I will not correct the rotation of the electrode. In the end, I think that this is probably of limited clinical importance and we are relying mostly on the stimulation response seen later during the monopolar review. A not very important but perhaps interesting observation is that after we had implanted some patients with Abbott, we noticed that we quite often had a small edema where the electrode entered the cortex. However, when we compare this uh, with some patients implanted with Medtronic, it seems as if the reason why we seldom saw this edema when using Medtronic is simply that the artifact from the electrode is much larger with Medtronic, hiding a possible edema. Regarding the IPG pocket, a dummy IPG is provided with the Infinity IPG for those who would like to test the size of the pocket. 
It is then time for the tunnelation. With Medtronic, the carrier at the end of the tunnelator is straight and completely inflexible, while the tunneling tool from Abbott is flexible and can be bent as desired. And the curved end decreases the risk for snapping back of the tunneling tool when retracted, with possible injury to the external jugular vein. Since the tunnelation tool can be shaped as desired, it is easy to perform the tunnelation without removing the stereotactic frame as seen here, and this saves a lot of time. A plastic tube is placed over the tunnelation tool before tunnelation and then left in place when the tunnelation tool is retracted. The tunnelation between the cranial incision and the incision behind the ear can be made with a tunnelation tool, but often it is faster to just pull up the plastic tube using a large clamp. The Abbott extension cable is very thin and is tunnelated from the cranial incision to the IPG incision, which is the opposite to the tunnelation of the Medtronic extension cable. With the non-flexible extensions from Metronic, we had some problems with bowstringing from straining cables. This was much reduced with the flexible extensions from Metronic. We have now implanted around 8 extensions from Abbott, and it seems as if bowstringing is not a problem. I believe that this might have to do not only with the flexibility of the extension, but also with the diameter, since the phenomenon of bowstringing is sometimes not caused by a tight extension cable. Often it is caused by a fibrous sheet around the extension cable, which is anchored to the clavicle and to the skull. Here we see one such case, with bowstringing even six months after removal of the extension cable. And here we see a fibrous sheet around the extension cable that was attached to the clavicle. Perhaps the minor diameter of the Abbott extension makes the formation of a large fibrous sheet less likely. When connecting the electrode and extension cable, with Metronic you tighten four screws, you pass the connector boot over the connector, and you secure the connector boot with two sutures. With Abbott, there is no boot or sutures, and you need only to tighten one single screw. When connecting the extension cable to the electrode and to the IPG, one can go to a good idea by using the eyes, but it is necessary to test the impedance during surgery to be sure. The testing is done on distance using the clinician programmer, which does not need to be sterile. And with this, we end the procedure and this short presentation. Thank you for your attention.